do feel abandoned in that moment by police, by the people who are supposed to protect you? Absolutely. After everything, I get more angry because you have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. I had nothing. You're supposed to protect and serve. There is no excuse for their actions. And I will never forget them. I will never forget them. How many students were in your classroom when the shooter came in? 11 students. <clears throat> so the shooter killed every single student in your classroom. Yes, ma'am. That's when I got you thinking, you know. This family lost one. This family lost one. I lost 11 that day. And I just went to my parents and said, I'm sorry. I tried my best. Of what I was told to do. Please don't be angry with me. We just heard from Arnufo Reyes, a teacher in Uvalde who survived a mass shooting. And as you saw, he recalled the details that were just incredibly gruesome. All 11 of his students were massacred during the school shooting in Uvalde. Now, thankfully, he survived. He was shot multiple times. He's already had multiple surgeries. Today, he had another surgery. And these stories, these firsthand accounts are incredibly important because for all of us, we have to keep this issue salient in our minds, right? When you hear about a school shooting or some mass shooting in the United States, it's easy to only be affected by that for a day or two. And then eventually, you know, it kind of dies down and we stop talking about it. And when we stop talking about it, then pressure on politicians dissipates. And we have to keep the pressure high on these politicians. And that means we continuously engage with this particular subject. Um, now, there's another clip that I want to show you. But before we get to that, I, I just got to get to this article from USA Today that explains how mass shootings have not stopped since Uvalde. At least 17 people were killed Friday to Sunday, the deadliest weekend of mass shooting gun violence this year, according to a USA Today analysis. In Philadelphia, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Saginaw, Michigan, Omaha, Nebraska, and other towns and cities, there were at least a dozen shootings that killed or injured four or more people, according to data compiled by the Gun Violence Archive and analyzed by USA Today. At least 82 people were wounded or killed. There have been at least 245 mass shootings this year, according to the archive. Last year, there were 692 mass shootings, the highest number of mass shootings of any year since 2014. The same weekend last year, June 4th to 6th, seven people were killed and 53 wounded in mass shootings, according to gun violence archive data. In 2020, the first weekend of June saw six mass shooting deaths and 50 people wounded, the archive's data shows. So that article confirms that mass shootings are a common occurrence in this country. We only hear about one or two every once in a while, but they happen all the time. Oftentimes they're not reported or they're underreported, but make no mistake about it. They're always happening across the country. Now, last Wednesday, we published a video to this channel talking about the 17 mass shootings that took place since Uvalde, and I recorded that video on Tuesday evening. By the time it went live on Wednesday morning, the video was already out of date. It was already outdated because another mass shooting had occurred and the number had changed from 17 to 18. It is almost impossible to keep up because it keeps happening in the United States. And I just have to remind everyone that this is the only country where mass shootings are a common phenomenon like this. This doesn't happen in Japan. This doesn't happen in Canada. Sure, mass shootings do occur in these countries, but never at this frequency where every single weekend we are not seeing one or two, but multiple mass shootings. Now, I've got another video from Mr. Reyes' interview, and he explains very clearly what is needed to stop this. And spoiler alert, it's obviously gun control. Reyes says no training could have prepared them for this. Even though the school had extensive protocols, he says laws have to change. It all happened too fast. Training, no training, all kinds of training. Nothing sets you ready, gets you ready for this. We trained our kids to sit under the table. And that's what I thought of, you know, at the time, 
but we set them up to be like ducks. You can give us all the training you want, but it's uh, gun laws have to change. It won't never change unless they change the, the laws. Reyes says he doesn't think he can ever return to a classroom, but he's making it his mission to honor the lives of his students and two of his fellow teachers. The only thing that I know that I will not let these children and my coworkers die in vain. Absolutely, I will not. I will go anywhere to the end of the world to not let my students die in vain. They didn't deserve this. Nobody in this world deserves this kind of pain. No mother, nobody deserves this. I will go to the end of the world to make sure things get changed. Notice how he unequivocally said that the laws have to change. He was very specific there. And he added that no amount of training can prepare you for this. And it's so important to hear a survivor say this because... He doesn't have a political agenda. He's not paid by the gun industry. He's not taking money from, you know, the Brady campaign. This is just a human being who went through something that is unimaginable. I can't fathom the mental trauma that he's going to deal with for the rest of his life. And what he's saying is obviously the laws have to change. Now we're seeing solutions proposed by Republican politicians that are either nonsensical. Ted Cruz is floating door reform. Governor Te uh, uh, Greg Abbott of Texas also floated this as a solution. And then the other solution, which is what Republicans really want, which isn't actually a solution, though, is more guns. In fact, many Republicans have called for arming teachers, a position that's becoming increasingly popular among the American public if you look at certain public opinion polls. In fact, Ohio Republicans passed the bill to arm teachers, and Republican Governor Mike DeWine has already vocalized his intent to sign that into law. The problem is not all mass shootings take place in schools. Sure, it's a lot more tragic when children are involved but not all mass shootings happen in schools they happen at grocery stores they happen in movie theaters they happen everywhere so arming teachers isn't going to solve the gun violence problem adding more guns isn't going to solve the gun violence problem more guns is directly correlated with more gun violence obviously we know that but the reason why gun manufacturers want this to be a policy is because this will increase their profits. Imagine state budgets dedicating millions of dollars to gun manufacturers for firearms for teachers. So it's all about the profits in this country. We live in a late stage capitalist society and everything is about profits. It's profits over people. That's all that matters. CNN's Manu Raju spoke with GOP Senator Tom Tillis, and he claims that they just simply can't get Republicans to agree to raising the legal age to purchase firearms from 18 to 21. And that's because the gun manufacturers who bribed these politicians don't want to restrict how many people can purchase firearms because then that means that they make less money. Sure, maybe more lives will be saved, but profits, that's what matters to them. So how can you get Republicans to agree to policies that specifically fly in the face of what these gun manufacturers and gun interest groups want? The answer is, I don't think that you can. Now, we're seeing action currently. We're, ta we're listening to you know Chuck Schumer say that, oh, we're giving them more time. But understand what I think is happening currently, and this is an overly cynical approach, so if you have more optimism, feel free to disregard what I'm saying. But what we're seeing is stalling right now this is still fresh on all of our minds we're hearing people who were involved in the shooting who survived a mother who saved her two children explain how horrific this was and so long as the media continues to cover this it's going to be at the top of americans minds which means that politicians have to pretend to care and pretend as if they're working out the details but the second something else happens and we get distracted politicians aren't going to take action. So I think it's really important that we continue to talk about this and we keep this high on our agendas. Otherwise, politicians, you know, um, they're going to not do anything because this is what they do. And even if we keep the pressure on them, they still might not do anything. So, you know, it's important that we kind of entrench ourselves with these stories and we listen to these stories 
because we can't forget it. It's easy to listen to the news about mass shootings and just like take it as this abstract thing and acknowledge that it's bad. But, you know, it's a completely different thing to really hear these gruesome details and grapple with it. And specifically not you and I, but the people who aren't convinced that we need to address this with gun control. So one last thing I want to leave you with is um, a snippet of Matthew McConaughey's speech from the White House press briefing that took place today. This is an individual who grew up in Uvalde, Texas, and he cares about this issue. In fact, he wrote an op-ed that was published by the Austin American Statesman where he explains why this matters to him. He is the father of a kindergarten teacher, so it hits close to home. Um, and I think that this is important to have celebrities speak up on this, especially ones where you know this happens in their hometowns is important because people listen to celebrities. So I want to leave you with a particular moment from his speech that's important because he explains how gruesome this is. My day wore green high top converse with a heart she had hand drawn on the right toe because they represented her love of nature. Camilla's got these shoes. Can you show these shoes, please? Wore these every day. Green converse with a heart on the right toe. These are the same green converse on her feet that turned out to be the only clear evidence that could identify her after the shooting. How about that shit? <clears throat> we also met a cosmetologist. Now, she was well-versed in mortuary makeup. That's the task of making the victims appear as peaceful and natural as possible for their open casket viewings. These bodies were very different. They needed much more than makeup to be presentable. They needed extensive restoration. Why? Due to the exceptionally large exit wounds of an AR-15 rifle. Most of the body so mutilated that only DNA test or green converse could identify them. Many children were left not only dead, but hollow. So whatever you do, do not forget about this issue. Keep this issue at the top of your mind. There are other things that are really important. Climate change. Roe v. Wade will be overturned very soon. But make sure that you do not reduce this pressure on politicians. At every town hall, you ask them about this. If you have the opportunity, call your representative, email them, keep the pressure up. And even, you know, exerting a maximum amount of pressure might not be conducive to change. But at least they're feeling the pressure because at a minimum, they're pretending right now. But the second we all turn away and get distracted by something else, they stop even putting up this facade that they're trying to work on some sort of a deal. So keep the pressure up and don't let these deaths be in vain.